by our love. And that's what I feel led to preach about this morning. Loving God and loving one another. In the message this morning, I'll be dealing with five areas that will be visible in a Christian's life when they love God. And I'm also going to talk in the second half of this message about the five, I'm sorry, the nine ingredients of love. How many of us like to bake cakes and, and bake sometimes? Anybody? Or cook a nice meal? How many know you need ingredients to go in that meal to make it really good? When we think of the word love and Christian love, what exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to look into the Word of God and find out what that means and how that is carried out as believers in Christ. Amen? Matthew chapter 27, verses 37 to 40, Jesus was asked a question. And he says, they tried to trap him, the Bible says, and they, they asked, teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? In verse 37 says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Somebody say all. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the other commandments and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for your word this morning. I pray, Lord God, that we could reach out to people with love. I thank you, Lord, that the first fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. And so, Lord, that sets the, sets the tone for all the other fruit of the Holy Spirit according to your word. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name that, Lord, we would just reach out and touch somebody with the gospel message. To tell somebody about Jesus, that how we can be saved, Lord God. I pray, that, Lord, as I decrease behind this pulpit, that you would increase Holy Spirit. Speak through me, Lord God, from pulpit to pew, to live streaming, to community television. We thank you for that, Lord God, and we praise you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus told us in the Word of God in John 13, verses 34 and 35, He says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Amen? How I many you know love is so very, very important in the world we live in now? There's so much hate going on. There's so many shootings going on. There's so much things that are people calling good evil and evil good. How I many you know we need to know what this word love really, really means according to the word of God? In Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10, the apostle Paul writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Oh, no one anything except except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Amen. There are Greek, different Greek words in the Bible. Uh, there are different ones that it, uh, concerning the word love. When the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world, that word loved is talking about agape. The Greek word is agape, meaning that God loves you and I unconditionally. God doesn't love us just because we, you know, somebody might be a good moral person. God loves us irregardless. Amen? The word agape means unconditional love. Love's chief ingredient is self-sacrifice for the benefit of the loved one. Even if you don't feel like doing something and the Lord puts on your heart, why don't you encourage somebody? Why don't you give this person a call or whatever the case might be to reach out and say, I am going to do what the Lord wants me to do. Even in, in, in situations that are not convenient, how many, how many know we got to reach out and love one another? Amen. Love is the main evidence or motivation in the Christian life. If we say that we're Christians, how many know we've got we've to expel love, amen, and love one another? There are some churches, and thank God that doesn't happen here, but this bickering, complaining, and, and all these different things. And if the church of the living God is not getting along, how in the world is the world going to look at us and say, I want in? I want Jesus, amen. We have to know and understand how many know we've got to dare to be different, now, when I say that, I don't mean Christians are better than anyone. Nobody's better than anyone. But how many know that our Savior, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to the earth? He lived a perfect, sinless life, and he died on the cross and laid his life down so you and I could say, Jesus, I invite you into my life to be my personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I want to live my life for you according to the Bible. I repent for my sins, Lord God, and I thank you that you're saving me from a horrible place of going to hell. Amen? 
Somebody say glory to God and Jesus is the way. Love is the desire to give at the expense of self for the benefit of others. I'll say that again. Love is the desire to give at the expense of self for the benefit of others. Amen? Somebody say praise the Lord. Now, when the love of God is present in the life of a believer, it will be visible in five different areas. Somebody say visible. Let me give you these five things if you're taking notes. Number one, we have love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. John 14 and verse 15, the words of Jesus, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. So the manifestation of us loving Jesus is obedience to his word. In other words, if we say we love the Lord, the proof of us loving the Lord is obedience to the word of God. In other words, what Jesus taught us is to go ahead and obey what he says. Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, How can you call me Lord, Lord, and don't even obey what I say? So in other words, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, yes, he saved us, amen. However, we also accept him as our Lord. Our Lord means that he now is our owner. He's our master. What he says goes, amen. Praise the Lord. We need to have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that our soul and spirit will live forever after we die. Amen. Somebody say that's good news. Many times people say, when I die, that's it, it's all over, I don't have conscience anymore, and that's the end. That's not true. The Bible tells us in the Word of God that when God created Adam, he was just a corpse laying on the ground. God created Adam from the soil of the ground, and then God breathed into him his spirit and soul, and he became a living being. When God did that, his soul and spirit were immortal. In other words, your soul and spirit will live forever. That's why Jesus came from, the, came from heaven to the earth. He fulfilled the law. You and I have sinned. We've broken God's law. So God made a way that we could receive Jesus who paid the price for our sins and died on the cross, laid down his life so that you and I would have eternal life with God. How many know that's the most important decision any of us are ever going to make in our life? The most important invitation ever given was by Jesus himself in John 3.16. For God loved the world so much that he gave his own one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Somebody once said, how long is eternity? It's forever. <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no number you can put on eternity. Eternity is forever, amen? As I mentioned earlier, we've all broken God's law. Romans 3.23 tells us, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Now, many times when you're sharing the word of God with people and you're sharing this message uh, of, about what, what the Bible tells us about salvation, people will get a little skeptical or sometimes they'll say, well, I'm a pretty good moral person. I kind of believe that, you know, I've done more good than bad in my life. And when I die, you know, when I get to heaven, God's going to weigh that out. He'll say, you know, you're pretty good. You did more good than bad. So come on in. It doesn't work that way. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. One person one time said, I'm pretty good. I've only killed one person, and I know somebody that's killed three. Well, how many about, know the Bible says, thou shalt not murder to begin with? Amen. So we've all broken God's law. That's why we need Jesus. Amen. Jesus came to the earth from heaven and fulfilled the law by living a perfect life, as I had said, and never one time sinned. He loved us so much that he willingly laid down his life and died for us on the cross to be our substitute. Romans 5 and 8 tells us, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. See, Jesus didn't, say, didn't look down on the earth and say, wow, Father, look at all these wonderful people. I'm going to go die for them. We were still sinners, amen. We, were, we had enmity with God. In other words, we, we didn't want God in our life and, and so forth. We were just doing our own thing. But then Jesus came to us, amen, because God loves us so much. How many know that somebody look at your neighbor and say, you're special in God's sight? God made us in his own image. In the image of God, he made us. That's why all this foolishness is going on in the world right now that, that, that's going on and, and, you know, boys becoming girls, girls becoming boys and all this stuff that's going on. The Bible says in, in the book of Genesis 1 and 27, but God made them male and female. It's, you're not anything in between. <laughs> Somebody say glory to God. Amen. We have to understand that. And that what the devil is doing is he's raising people up to attack the image of Almighty God. 
Anything that stands for the image of Almighty God is being attacked by the world system right now. And how many, you know, we, you and I got to get on our knees and be praying for the world we live in. The Bible tells us that the penalty for sin is death. That means eternal separation from God forever in a horrendous, horrible place called hell. Hell was never made for, uh, for us. It was made for the devil and his angels, but people chose with their own free will not to have a personal relationship with God. Amen? Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The good news is that we can invite Jesus Christ into our lives to be our personal Lord and Savior, to have eternal life with him forever. You know, I know we all go through problems upon this earth, whether you're a Christian or if you're not a Christian. We have different situations that we go through. But let me just encourage you, if you're going through something right now, that you're go if you're a Christian, you're going to so much of a better place. Jesus says in John 14, I'm going to go and I'm going to prepare a mansion for you in heaven. Amen. How many you know that when we get to heaven, all our problems are gone? We're going to have glorified bodies. Somebody say hallelujah to that. Somebody say there's no keto diet in heaven because you ain't going to have an inch to pinch. Amen. Somebody say no headaches in heaven, no IRS in heaven. Hallelujah. For is the Lord. When I said that one time, somebody said, I'm accepting Jesus just for that. This is no IRS. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. See, it's a heart issue. Uh, in other words, your heart is your mind, your will, and your emotions. When you really say, Jesus, I believe in you. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I invite you into my life. Lord, I repent for my sins. I want to live the way you want me to live from now on according to your word. Then you are saved. Say amen. Praise God. The most important decision you will ever make is to admit that you are a sinner and ask Jesus Christ to come into your life to be a personal Lord and Savior. And it's very important too, you know, a lot of Christians, they say the words of the prayer, but they don't repent from their sin. If we just say the words, we might have the baseball cap that says, I love Jesus, or the bumper sticker, John 3.16. But the real deal is to be really born again, really saved, is to repent from sin. In other words, to live the way God wants us to live. One time there was a, a, bunch of, a bunch of atheists and they were, uh, you know, a Christian um, apologist was, was telling them about Jesus and about salvation and so forth. And he asked them an important question. He said, listen, if, if you knew for a fact that God does exist and his Bible is very true and, and heaven is very real and so forth, would you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Many of them said, no, I wouldn't. The apologist then asked the question, well, if you knew that was the truth, why would you say that? They said, because I'd have to change my lifestyle, and I don't want to do that. Amen? How many know to be a Christian, it does take a changed lifestyle? It, you know, and to live for the Lord, how many know his way is the better way? He tells us, he orchestrated us how to live our life according to his word. Amen? We have purpose in life. He created us in his image. He created us to, to worship him and to praise him, to magnify his name. He wants that connection once again with you and I. Amen? The second thing is, when the love of, God's, when the love of God is present in the life of a believer, he has love for the scriptures, love for the Bible. Amen? Psalm 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Uh, you know, David's writing the psalm and he says, Lord, I study your word. I've hidden your word in my heart. I've memorized it. I believe it. It's part of my very being. And therefore, I, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. There's something very wrong if somebody says, I love Jesus and I'm a Christian, but yet doesn't like the word of God or the Bible. I know every single morning, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back at all, but I have my cup of coffee, amen, and every morning I'm into this word. I read at least a chapter a day, but I don't read it for the sake of reading it or to check the box so I'll feel guilty later on if I don't. I read it because I want to know what it says. I want to obey what it says. I want it to be a part of me. I want it to change me. Amen. Praise the Lord. When the love of God is present in the life of a believer, he has number three, love for the sanctuary or the church that we attend. I don't know about you, but I look forward to coming here even before Sunday. I love coming to church. How about you? Amen. Isn't it a great place to be in church with your, fam with your church family, getting together and praising God together, having fellowship, in other words, everything in common with one another? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, let us not neglect our church meetings as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. I like what Psalm 122, King David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Isn't it a wonderful, amen, to come into the house of God? Fourthly, we would have, we'll, we're going to have love for other Christians is what the Bible talks about if we have the love of God present in our lives. First John chapter 4, verse 21, the Bible says, and he gave and he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their Christian brothers and sisters. First John uh, in the Bible, cha uh, chapter 1, uh, goes on to say that if we say we love God and we hate a brother or sister in Christ, then the love of God is not in us. Amen? That we are liars. How many know that it's almost like the sign of the cross? I mean, the cross is a, is a vertical piece going up, and it's a horizontal piece, and they're interconnected in the middle. So our relationships with other people, in other words, our relationships with the horizontal level, that represents our relationships with others. Our relationship with the vertical is our relationship with God. Notice they intertwine together. So if my relationship is not good with somebody on this earth, it's going to hinder my relationship with God because they meet right in the middle. That's why it's good to keep short accounts. In other words, to forgive people quickly. If somebody offends us, to quickly forgive them. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't hold on to unforgiveness, amen? How many know we've got to forgive one another? We're all going to get offended whether we're Christians or not. Let's face it, amen? So let's, let's quickly forgive. Um, Jesus said that, uh, forgive me for my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. And Jesus went on to say, if you don't forgive others for their sin, sins against you, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your sins. I don't know about you, but boy, I want, I want to make sure my heavenly Father forgives me. How about you, amen? I'm not going to let one little sin that somebody did to me affect my relationship with God. Quickly give it over to the Lord and forgive, forgive, forgive. Amen. It's, besides that, you're the one tossing and turning at night at 3 o'clock in the morning. You're the one rehearsing what they did to you. You're the one thinking of retaliation. It's hurting you more than them. And they're living their merry old life and they're happy, go lucky, and just going about it. So forgiveness hurts us more than it hurts anyone else, amen? Unforgiveness, rather. Number five, love for sinners. How I many you know we're going to have love for people who don't know Jesus if we have the love of God present in our hearts? Jesus had a heart for sinners. God's love is more than just being loved. It is opening our lives so that the Lord can love through us, so that he can reach a world for himself. Jesus said in the Great Commission, Mark 16 and 15, and then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Somebody say everyone. If you go to the New Testament, the book of Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 talks about what's called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not the fruits, plural, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. How many know these are all really good things? Amen? Really good things. Love is listed first as the fruit of the Spirit because it is the foundation of the other graces. Now, if, you, if you're taking notes, if you notice, these, these nine fruit of the Holy Spirit could be broken down into three different categories. I don't know if you ever thought about that. Let's think about the first three fruit. The first three fruit are love, joy, and peace. And these three are habits of the mind which find their source in God. These pertain to our own self. So in other words, the first three, love, joy, and peace, the habits of our mind, amen, and their source is in God. In other words, what happens is the Holy Spirit, when we submit to him, he starts producing this fruit in our hearts and in our lives. The second three fruit, which are long-suffering, another word for that is patience. Somebody say patience. Somebody say, I'm going to suffer long. <laughs> <laughs> Long suffering or patience is the first one. The next one is kindness. And the next one is goodness. And these three reach out to other people. These are virtues that we do to other people. So the next, you know, those three, we reach out to people with patience. How many know you need patience with people? Praise the Lord. You need patience if you're a driver in Massachusetts. Amen. You need patience. Did you ever pray for more patience? Anybody ever pray for patience? What happens when you pray for patience? You have a lot more trials, 
more car jams and more backups and more different things, right? Amen? But how many know that God produces that patience within us? He wants us to be kind. He wants us to be good to other people. The third and final three fruit of, of, of the Holy Spirit uh, is, is faithfulness or meekness. That it, faithfulness is one. Meekness is the second one. Meekness means gentleness. And temperance. Temperance is another word for self-control. And these guide the general conduct of a believer who is led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, many times we hear what I'm going to read now at weddings. Many times, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verses, uh, you know, verses 1 through 8 is read at weddings. But I feel led to read this out of the Amplified Version of the Bible. There are different versions of the Bible, and the Amplified kind of amplifies. In other words, it brings it out more for more of our understanding of what the Bible is teaching. And these are the words it says. Verse 13, it says, if I speak with the tongues of men, uh, uh, verse um, 1 rather, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, that is, for others growing out of God's love for me, then I have become only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, just an annoying distraction in other words. If I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have all sufficient faith so that I I can remove mountains, but to not have love, that is reaching out to others, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but to not have love, it does me no good at all. Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful. It is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things, regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, and endures all things without weakening. Love never fails. It never fades nor ends. Amen. We can come into church and jump all over the place and do cartwheels and everything else, but how many of you know, if we don't have love, that's nothing. Love is the main ingredient, amen, in our lives, amen, praise God as Christians. Now, if you want to take notes, the following are the nine ingredients of love. We talk about this word love, we're like, okay, how does that look in everyday life? What does it mean? What are the ingredients? Let's break it down a little more what that means. Well, the first ingredient for love is patience. That is no hurry. Patience suffers long. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Patience, patience develops best when we're under trials. That's the whole thing. You pray for patience, you're going to get trials, right? James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Somebody say glory to God. You know, if you get somebody that's uh, been walking with the Lord for a long time and, and living for Jesus for a long time, then they've been through a lot of battles. They've been through a lot of situations. They, they, were, they know that they're overcomers in the Lord. And every time you get through one battle, amen, how many of you know the Lord makes you even stronger to face the next? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. The second ingredient for love is kindness. Somebody say kindness. That is, kindness means love in action. Never, it never acts rashly, is not inconsistent, it's never puffed up or proud. Kindness and patience are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 1 and 7 says, it, And godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Amen? Number three is generosity. Generosity is love in competition. It's not envious or jealous. It's liberal in giving. If you're generous, you see a need and you give to that need. You're a generous person. You're not envious. You're not jealous. How many know if we're envious or jealous, that's going to really, really cause a toll on us? Amen? We've got to let those things go. And we've got to say, Lord, help me to be generous. Number four ingredient of love is humility. Humility is freedom from pride, meekness. It's no parade, no airs. The Bible says in James 4 and 10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. How I many you know as Christians we've got to be humble? 
We, can, we should never walk around saying, oh, I'm better than this one, or I'm better than that one. That's egotistical pride. That shouldn't be in the Christian's life at all. It's level ground underneath the cross. Therefore, we're all equal in the Lord. Amen? There's no better anybody than anything. We just have different positions that God, God called us to. I happen to be a pastor, but that doesn't mean I'm better than you or any other person. Amen. Uh, somebody might be an evangelist. Somebody else might be something else in the body of Christ, but it doesn't mean we're better than anyone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Number five ingredient is courtesy. That is love in society. It does not behave unseemingly. Always polite and never rude or discourteous. Remember years ago, um, it must have been over 10 years ago, a little courtesy won't kill you. Remember those bumper stickers? Remember we all put those bumper stickers, a little courtesy won't kill you in Massachusetts, you know? Uh, you know, people are so impatient and everything, and how I many you know we've got to be courteous, amen? That's one of the ingredients of love is to be courteous, amen? Praise God. 1 Peter 3 and 8 says, finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tenderhearted and keep a humble attitude. There's that humility again. We've got to keep a humble attitude as believers. Number six ingredient for love is unselfishness. Somebody say unselfishness. Now, somebody look at your neighbor and say, I know he's not talking about you right now. <laughs> Amen. Unselfishness. It's not putting yourself first, never selfish, sour, or bitter. It seeks only the good of others. It does not retaliate or seek revenge. Amen. It's easy to get selfish in the world we live in. It's easy to be self-centered. But how many you know we've, be, we've got to be unselfish? Amen. Praise the Lord. Number seven ingredient is good temper. Somebody say good temper. Amen. That means you're never irritated. You're never resentful. A bad temper is the work of the flesh is what the Bible teaches. The works of the flesh are mentioned in Galatians chapter, um, chapter 5 verses 19 through 21. It gives a big list of what's the works of the flesh. Then it goes on to talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Number eight is righteousness. That is love in conduct. Righteousness hates sin. It never, never glad when others go wrong. It always gladdened by goodness to others. Always slow to expose. Always eager to believe the best of someone. Always hopeful and always enduring. That is righteousness. Amen. First John 3, 7. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. How I many you know we as Christians, we got to do what's right, even if it hurts. Amen. And finally, number nine is sincerity. One of the uh, ingredients of love. Sincerity means never boastful or conceited. Not a hypocrite, always honest, leaves no impression but what is strictly true. It does not blaze out in anger, not brood over the wrongs. Always is just, joyful, and truthful. It knows how to be silent, full of trust, always present. So church, how many of you know we as Christians need to love one another? Galatians 6 and verse 10, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. We must love one another by not forsaking each other. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love in good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Amen. So in conclusion, we ought to praise the Lord today for his overwhelming love for us. We can shout, we can run, we can turn flips, but the best means of having, of thanking him for his love is by letting him love through our lives and reach others for Jesus. So today I invite you to join me as I ask the Lord to help me in a prayer that I'm going to do right now to love like Jesus and we can all pray for one another. I thank him for loving me and I am sure you do too. Today let's show that love for God by doing his will and being what he would have us to be and by loving like he would have us love, amen, and by loving others exactly as we have been loved by God. And again, Matthew 22 and verse 39, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now I'm going to end in a word of prayer, and then I'm going to ask Joshua and uh, his wife Lindsay to bring Caleb Scott up, and we're going to do a dedication. Let's stand on our feet and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We magnify your name this, this day, Lord God. We thank you for your message today, Lord God, loving you and loving others as well, loving one another. I pray, Lord, that we can see through the eyes of Jesus. I pray, dear Holy Spirit, as we submit to you, that you create love within us. 
I pray, Lord God, that we can love one another, Lord God, as you have loved us. We pray, Lord God, we could lead others to Jesus Christ, to give them the wonderful message of the gospel. Lord, I pray that people would, 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 would get a Bible and read the Bible, Lord, starting with the gospel of John, and see what it says for itself, Lord God, and to do what it says. I pray, Lord, you just have your perfect way and will in people's hearts and lives. We thank you, Jesus, for coming to the earth and dying on the cross and shedding your precious blood so that we could be saved. But Lord, you've also given us a free will, and you're never going to interfere with our free will. We can say yes to you, or we can choose to say no to you. But Lord, I just pray that we would say yes to you, because Lord, it's the most important eternal decision that we're ever going to make in our entire lives. And we thank you for that, Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, it is a good thing to be in the house of the Lord, and it is a good thing to give God thanks and praise. You know, this morning I have a serious question um, in this song. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it is a question for believers and unbelievers, save and unsaved. It's all our questions. All right? And no one can determine that for you. Your parents can't, your pastor can't, your spouse can't. It is a personal question that you have to answer personally. All right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have you answered God's question for your final <clears throat> destiny? And have you made your reservation for eternity? It matters not if you are young and strong, you're gonna need God's helping hand, nor does it matter if you are rich or you are poor. At the border of life, death will veil your eyes, and you can never find your way in the dark. And dread and danger will join death those awful monsters and they will pinch you oh they will tear you in the dark you're gonna need someone to help you you're gonna need someone to guide you you're gonna need someone to lead you home. Oh, and that's why Jesus returned. Oh, and that's why Jesus returned from the valley of the shadows of death. him hold your hand and lead the way though I walk through death's valleys it's like a shadow to me for I fear no evil that are waiting there for Jesus will be with me his presence and power will surely lead me and he will guide me oh he will comfort me through oh yes i have someone to help me oh yes i have someone to guide me oh yes i have Someone to lead me home. Oh, and that's why Jesus returned. Oh, and that's why Jesus returned. 
from the valley of the shadows of death. Why won't you let him? Why won't you let him? Why won't you let him hold your hand and lead the way? Hold your hand and lead the way. Won't you let him hold your hand and lead the way? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I encourage you today Amen. to let go and let God. Let him hold your hand and let him lead the way. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Beautiful day. It's beautiful. Ricky, let, come in, Rick. We just want to let, let the Lord know that we're here. Everybody.
sing praises to our Heavenly Father any way we can. We, we, we get reminiscent of Jesus' baptism in the Jordan. Let's gather by the river. <clears throat> Shall we gather by the river? Where a bright angel feed the trough With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Sing it out. that they, everybody knows who we are by our love for each other. Get rid of all the hate. Mm. But this is an old, an old one. We've done this a number of times. 
the words are so great because we have such a great friend in Jesus. words are so so awesome let's let's sing that a cappella now just that that for that first half of the first verse what a friend we have in Jesus sing. listen to the words as you pray sing and praise with those what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the 
sing and praise. Hi, I'm Pastor Craig Matheson. I just want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, those of you watching by YouTube right now, all that you have to do is on the right bottom side of your screen, you'll see a little red subscribe button. Click on that subscribe button, then you're going to see a notification bell come up. Click on the notification bell. From that point on, every service and every video that we have is going to be, you'll be notified in order to see it. Now, those of you watching by community television, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. All you need to do is log on to YouTube.com, then in the, in the search engine, type in Changing Lives Christian Church, and then our, then our, um, our YouTube channel is going to come up. Then just hit the subscribe key and the notification bell after that, and then you will also be notified every time we have a church service or a special video. So I just want to encourage you to go ahead and to do that. And I hope you have a fantastic day today and may God bless you.